Well, my name is Margaret Pickervance, but my nickname is Peggy. So everybody knows me as Peggy. Um, I've been living in this house for 54 years. I've had six children. Um, I've got five generations. I've got seven great-great-great-grandchildren. I'm 89 years of age. Yeah, 89 years of age. My first match was the 18th of August, 1945. But I can't remember who it was. It, I'm sure it was either Leeds or one of them because it was that long ago, I can't remember it. And, um, 1945. One of the first things I, I met when I went in there was a lady who always wore a long red coat. Always wore a long red coat. And she had those blue tinted glasses. So I, was, I assume she had something wrong with her eyes. But she was very friendly and she, she, was, looking at, she was looking after me because I was a kid, you know what I mean? And uh, she turned around and she said to me, I'm going to give you a tip. Always put a hat pin in your pocket. So I said, what for? Like she said, well, she said, we get naughty men here. And they come and touch you up. Oh, she said, if they touch you up, just prod them with the pin. Now, if they're up to no good, they'll move. But if they're all right, they'll turn around and say, what are the so-and-so hell have you got in your pocket, missus? You know what I mean? And they'd stay there, like. And we also had two priests there, right? And when anything was going wrong in the pit on the pitch and the lads were swearing, all you could hear out of them was, Sorry, Father. Sorry, Father. And the priest used to just say, It's all right, my son. It's all right. Because I think they were enjoying the match as well. And they were from St. Anthony's in Scotland Road, those priests. But they were very, really good, yeah. But another thing that was something, there was no toilets, no ladies' toilets in them days. No, and the men had to put their foot on the door if you wanted to go in the toilets and use the lads' toilets. And there was a lady who used to stand, I'm not sure whether it was by the boy's pen. She used to have a tea in and china cups, you know, like like porcelain cups, you know. And you used to get your cup of tea off here. There was no machines, no machines. And the only lady's toilet was in the uh, director's block. But in them days, you could move around the ground. If Liverpool were playing this end... You could stay there. If you were playing near the other end, you could move around and you could have to move along the paddock. There was a paddock and there was a, a roadway right the way around to the other end of the pitch because the crowds weren't that great then, you see. And uh, that's what we used to do. We used to move from end to end. You know, when the match, half time, we'd move around, you know what I mean? And things like that. When we're going into the ground, even when Tommy was in, the, in his wheelchair, the likes of Ron Yates would stop and talk to us outside. Jan Mould would stop and talk to us outside. Your dad would stop and talk. You know, if, the, if Phil Thompson calls me ma'am, because we went to Wembley. I forget what, which game it was. And we went to Wembley and we had a minibus. I, I always take loads of bacon buses and things like that, right? Loads loads of a hamper full, you know. For, I give them to everybody. I don't just give them... I used to have a biscuit tin full and I'd take it to the match with me and everyone that was around had a bussy. Anyway, um, we, went to, we went to Wembley and we had this minibus. And when we were coming out of Wembley, Phil Thompson was... Was it Phil Thompson? Yeah, Phil Thompson was walk, starting to walk up to the hotel because we were all meeting in the hotel for their reception. And uh, I said to him, he put, popped his head in the window and he said, he's all all right, because we'd won. And I said, yeah, do you want a bacon bussy? And he said, I'm going up for a, 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 a set-up meal. I said, yeah, we can still have a bacon bussy. So he took a bacon bussy. He said, thanks, Ma. Thanks, Ma. <laughs> so every time he sees me, he says, hello, Ma. Yeah, so, yeah. But as I say, I, 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 I can't fault them. I can't fault them. Yeah, go in the conservatory, and there's a plastic little plastic bag with me signing on for Liverpool. That's me, and that was in about 1984, 
and we went to a Christmas, we had a Christmas family party in the te- time when the, the ground was free. There was no lock-ups and things like that to stop you going anywhere. You could go anywhere in the trophy room and, you know, walk around and do. And we had this uh, family Christmas party, right, about 1984 it was. And um, I used to know, only casually, the man who had the keys to all the doors. Joe, his name was, right? And I watched him after the meals are finished and I said to my son who was with me with his girl, girlfriend at the time come and we follow Joe and ask him will he show us the table in the boardroom so he said oh no man we can't and I said well, yes we can there's nobody here you know what I mean the, and uh, we went for a walk and we followed Joe and he disappeared into this door right so we followed him and I knocked on the door thinking oh Joe will open it who opened it Peter Robinson. Peter Robinson, right? It's signed on the back. It tells you who he is. It's Peter Robinson. And he's, well, you can imagine me, my feet, my legs went like jelly. And he, he's, I said, oh, God, you know. And he said, um, what, what's your name? So I said, told him my name was Peggy. Like So he said, oh, come on in then. Is this your son? So I said, yeah. So he, I said to him, what I wanted to do was show my son this table because apparently it's made out of one tree and it's massive it's the whole room right and all these men were sitting around this table right well you can honestly god i was speechless i was speechless and he said well come on in have you got a camera he said to graham so graham said yeah i've got a camera with it being a family party like so anyway he said come on in bring your girlfriend in Anyway, we went in, and he said, he pulled his chair out and said to me, sit down there. I think he must have known I was going to faint. <laughs> anyway, he, he what's named? He he pulled the chair out and he said, now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to do something. So I looked around, you know, I didn't recognise anyone at the time because I was that excited. And anyway, he said, um, I'm going to give you the pen that Ian Rush used when he signed on for Liverpool. So he handed me the pen and he handed me the book. And he I don't know whether he put a false piece of paper in or not, because I couldn't I can't see me signing the actual book. I wouldn't have recognised my signature anyway. Sign your name there, you know. So I signed my name on the thing, but it was like scribble because I was I was like that. So he I said Sid Reeks was sitting on the first table first chair. And he said to Sidreeks, pass us that brandy. So he said to me, down it in one. So I downed it in one. Never drank brandy in my life. But I downed it in one. It seemed to calm me a little bit. And uh, I said to Sidreeks, oh, thanks for that. And he said, it's all right. It wasn't mine. It was his. It was Kenny Dalglish's brandy I drank. So if you want me for your favourite player, it's Kenny Dalglish. Because he never said... You shouldn't have done it or anything like that. He just accepted that I took his brandy. And on the back of that, we got in touch with Brian Hall because Brian Hall was always around. And we got in touch with Brian Hall and gave him the pictures. And he took it to Peter Robinson. And on the back, Peter Robinson has verified it. When I came out, we went back to the dining room, right? And um, the fire alarm went... And all the boardroom empties and come through the dining room. And as Peter Robinson came past our table, he said to me, it's your fault. 